verify the Stokes theorem for this function where C is the unit circle in xy plane bounded by this sphere. We need to show that the value of the line integral of dot product of f vector with dr vector is equal to the surface integral of curl of f vector dot product with n vector ds. So if the value of the left hand side is equal to the value on the right hand side, then we say that the Stokes theorem is verified. So let's start with the solutions. First, I'm going to evaluate the left hand side integral, this one. So this is the given function. And let's take the dot product of this function with dr vector. So this is equal to zi vector plus xj vector plus yk vector. It's dot product with dr vector. That is dxi vector plus dyj vector plus dzk vector. For if I take r vector to be equal to xi vector plus yj vector plus zk vector, then I get dr vector to be equal to this. So taking their dot product, i dot i is 1. So I'm writing here z dx plus j dot j is also 1. So writing here x dy plus k dot k is 1, so I'm writing here y dz. Now taking the line integral on this dot product. So this is equal to the line integral over C. Now on C, because C is the circle in the xy plane. C is the unit circle in xy plane. In xy plane, z is equal to 0. So on C, z is equal to 0, that is dz is also 0. So first term vanishes, writing the second term and third term vanishes. Changing this to polar coordinates. So for the polar coordinates, we take x equal to r cos of phi and y equal to r sin phi, right? Because r is 1, c is your unit circle, the radius is 1. So we take x to be cos phi and y to be sin phi. So this is the line integral. Okay, x is cos of phi and dy becomes, from here dy is cos of phi d phi. So this is cos of phi d phi. And the limits of phi is from 0 to 2 pi. It is your circle. So the integrand is cos square phi. I can write this as 4 times the line integral with limits from 0 to pi by 2 cos square phi d phi, right? And now applying the reduction formula because I'm having the limits from 0 to pi by 2, right? So this is 4 times, okay. Using the reduction formula, what is the power of cos phi? It is 2. So in the numerator, we subtract the power with odd numbers till we get 1. Divided by writing the power and then subtracting the power with even numbers till we get 1. So 2 minus 2 becomes 0, so there is no need to subtract anything. And whenever we are having the even powers, we always multiply the result with pi by 2. So this is equal to, this is 4 times 2 minus 1 is 1, this is pi divided by 4, this cancels down and we are getting this to be pi. So the line integral of dot product of f vector with dr vector is pi. So we are getting the value for this integral to be equal to pi, right? Let's evaluate this integral now. So finding the curl of f vector first. So this is equal to writing here i vector, j vector, k vector, curl by curl x, curl by curl y, curl by curl z. Writing the first component of f vector here that is z then the second component and then the third component. So this is equal to evaluating this partial derivative of y with respect to y is 1 minus partial derivative of x with respect to z is 0 minus j vector. Partial derivative of y with respect to x is 0 minus partial derivative of z with respect to z is 1 plus k vector. Partial derivative of x with respect to x is 1 minus partial derivative of z with respect to y is 0. So we are getting here i vector plus j vector plus k vector. 
right? Next, we need to get n vector, that is the unit vector normal to the surface. So this is equal to xi vector plus yj vector plus zk vector as mod of n vector is equal to 1. So now here I am using the spherical polar coordinates. So taking x to be equal to r cos of phi sin theta, y equal to r sin of phi sin theta, z is equal to r cos of theta, where theta varies from 0 to pi by 2 and phi varies from 0 to 2 pi. If in the polar coordinates, please remember I have used the symbol phi for the polar coordinates. In polar coordinates, we have used x to be equal to r cos of phi and y to be equal to r sin of phi, where the limits of phi is from 0 to 2 pi for the circle. I have used the symbol phi. Please don't confuse. So if in the polar coordinates I have used the symbol phi. So in spherical polar coordinates I am taking its limits from 0 to 2 pi. Right. And the another symbol theta the limits from 0 to pi by 2. So let's put these details for the spherical polar coordinates on this n vector. Now as the radius is 1. So here we write for xi vector as cos phi sin theta i vector plus sin phi sin theta j vector plus cos of theta k vector. Taking the dot product of taking the dot product of curl of f vector with n vector. So this is equal to what is curl of f vector? It is i plus j plus k. And it's dot product with this n vector. So dot product of i with i is 1. So first term is cos phi sin theta plus second term becomes sin phi sin theta plus cos of theta. Now taking the surface integral on this, so this is equal to writing the surface integral and writing the value for this dot product, that is this one, and ds will be changed into r sine of theta d theta d phi, right? Because radius is 1, so I am writing ds to be as sine of theta d theta d phi and multiplying this sine theta inside, the double integration because I am integrating this with respect to phi first, so writing the limits of phi to be from 0 to 2 pi. And then writing the limits for theta from 0 to pi by 2. In the next example, I will be using theta for the polar coordinates. Right, so there may not be any confusion. Please cooperate for this. Thank you. So this is equal to the integration from 0 to pi by 2. Okay. Okay, integrating the first term with respect to phi, the integration for cos phi is sine of phi. So this is sine phi sine theta plus integrating this with respect to phi. So this is minus cos phi. So sine changes to minus cos of phi sine square theta. Sorry, this is square. Plus integration of 1 is phi. So this is phi cos of theta sine of theta and the limits from 0 to 2 pi d theta. When putting the upper limit, we get sine of 2 pi to be 0. So this is 0. Cos of 2 pi is 1. So this becomes sine square theta with negative sign. And here this becomes 2 pi cos of theta sine of theta. So this is equal to the integration from 0 to pi by 2. When putting the upper limit first term vanishes. So this is minus sine square theta plus 2 pi cos theta sine theta. Minus putting the lower limit now. So sine of 0 is 0. Cos of 0 is 1. So this is minus sine square theta. And phi is 0. So we are getting only the second term to be minus sine square theta. 
So this is minus sine square theta. d theta. So this is integration from 0 to pi by 2. So this is minus sine square theta plus 2 pi cos of theta sine theta plus sine square theta d theta. So these two cancelled out. Taking 2 pi outside So integrand is cos of theta sine of theta and then d theta. Let's put sine of theta to be equal to t so that it becomes cos theta d theta equal to dt. So this is equal to 2 pi. The integration for sine theta I am writing t and cos theta d theta becomes dt. Okay, for theta equal to 0, we are getting sine of 0. So the limit for t is 0 for the lower limit. And when theta is pi by 2, sine theta becomes sine pi by 2 that is 1. So the upper limit of t is 1. So this is equal to 2 pi. Integrating t with respect to t, it is t square divided by 2. And the limits from 0 to 1, 2, 2 cancelled out. So this is pi into, putting the upper limit we get 1 square that is 1 minus lower limit is 0. So this is equal to pi. So we are getting the value for the surface integral to be equal to pi. The same value. So the value for this integral is also pi. That means both the values of the surface integral and line integral are equal. So the Stokes theorem is verified. Let's write this. So this implies the line integral of dot product of f vector with dr vector its value is equal to pi and this value is also equal to the surface integral of curl of f vector dot product with n vector ds. So both these values are equal hence Stokes theorem is verified. Okay, thank you.